Welcome to the In Full Swing YouTube channel, and this is The Rumour Mill. Hello everybody and welcome back to Connor here in Full Swing. And we are back with The Rumour Mill, episode four. Four episodes, what is going on? And uh, before I start the video, um, I'd just like to say to everyone, thank you so much for all you new subscribers. Uh, you've liked, you've commented in your droves. I'm actually trying to respond to every single one to get your comments in and I'll try to respond with something nice or something analytical if you want to talk about football. I love talking about football, so I'll respond as well because I feel like I've got a duty of care to every single one of you who are commenting on every single video. So get your comments in, get your suggestions in, get your opinions in. This is a channel, this is a forum where I want everybody to speak, everybody to speak on what their opinions are, what's going on, what should be going on in the world, in and around the world of Leeds United, Marcelo Bielsa and our fan base. So yeah, I hope we're all doing fantastically well. I've got this massive bottle in front of me here. Look at the size of this, five litres. I didn't even realise it was five litres when I bought it. Is anyone in there, Thiago Almada? No, don't think so. But yeah, anyway, the first rumour today of the rumour mill is Bright Asai Samuel. Now, Bright Asai Samuel, uh, he was absolutely brilliant at Loftus Road earlier on in this season when Leeds United went down there losing out 1-0 to an Eze free kick. Shock horror, Leeds losing down in London. But listen, he was brilliant. Um, I believe he came on in that game and he's quick, he's pragmatic, He's very intelligent for a youngster as well. And he's got the attention of Everton, Leicester, and apparently Manchester United. So this is an absolute player, a real, real player in this division. So, you know, he's not going to be at QPR next year. And the surprising aspect of this potential deal is that Club Bruges had an offer accepted for 4.75 million. Now, that is incredible. In this current market, that just shows that how much of an impact this pandemic is having on the current market value of young players. So don't be expecting Leeds to be shelling out, for example, 35, 40 million for Ben White. I do not think that. And that is what I said in my video yesterday. I think the market value is going to be plummeting right now because clubs need financial help. So Asai Samuel, a 22-year-old England under-21 international, has had an offer of 4.75 million accepted. But why are you talking about this, Connor? Why are you talking about this? If Club Bruges have had an offer accepted, well, the medical didn't go through at Club Bruges. And apparently Leeds have declared their interest. They are looking at Bright Asai Samuel and they're looking at maybe a five million pound transfer fee. So keep Tabs on that one, um, how I would describe him, sheer pace and athleticism. And really perfect for a Marcelo Bielsa outfit as well, technically gifted. So keep an eye out for that one. Have faith. It's a saying that I've started saying, really, throughout the last couple of days. Not have faith, but have faith that this rumour will come around once again. It's one faith. Um, he's back in the rumour mill archives with Leeds United. Last season, I think the season before as well, under, under TC or Heckingbottom, wherever it was, um, there's no interest in Leeds United pre-Bielsa anymore anyway. Um, but yes, Juan Foyth has been linked with Leeds United again. I was recorded on one of my videos previously as saying I don't think he's good enough. I don't think he is to start this uh, for this Leeds United side. Alongside Liam Cooper, as a kid, I don't think he is. Ability-wise, Ben White, for me, is, is, is country miles ahead of him. And I think there are better options out there. Hold with me. But for a starting centre-back, for a replacement centre-back, I would 100% go in for one Foy for a snippet at 15 million as well. It's been spoken about that Leeds might go for a loan to buy, which I think would be a really good deal. Checking him out for a year. What's he going to be like? Could he stay with us? Every time I've seen him play for Tottenham, there's been a little bit of a mistake in him, which has always worried me. But at the end of the day, players can improve. And we know players can improve under Bielsa. But can we afford to have a starting centre-back in the Premier League who's barely featured for Tottenham, has sort of been exiled, really, from their squad, starting for this Leeds United side? With the way we play, with the way we play out from the back, the understanding that that back line has uh, with, with one another, can we afford to put a young kid in there, an Argentinian young kid, kid who's been casted out already by a Premier League squad. And I'd like to be in the championship. I really would. But can we start him? I don't think so. So I would take one foyth for me as a replacement centre half. And, it, and it, it, listen, it looks like all 
Spurs networks. If you go online, you type in Juan Foyth Leeds. There are a lot of Spurs outlets talking about that. But I think 15 million for a replacement centre back. Yeah, could we get him cheaper with this current economic market as I've just spoken to you about now? I believe so. I really do. And, and, and let's hope, you know, uh, that one maybe doesn't get done for me. I apologise, but maybe not for me. And, I, and I'll get on to why in a little bit with this other centre-back that I'm talking about. Now, the next rumour that has been circulating around the Leeds United transfer rumour mill sphere is Sebastian Anderson. The big Swede is 1 metre 90. If you can convert that into um, foot and inches for me, stick it in the comment section below. But he's a big boy. He's 29 years of age, Swedish, plays for Union Berlin, and he's, he, he looks like a good player. He's sought after. But guess who is after him as well? Yes, you're right. On the money, Celtic and Lille. So this is the issue with the transfer market, guys. You're always going to get now top, top clubs or bigger clubs who are going to be in the market for a striker. So we know with Jonathan David that Lille and Celtic are in the market for a striker. So if they've got scouts in similar regions across Scandinavia, across Latin America, South America, whatever it is, Americas, they're going to be in, in for the, the similar players. So you can see this with all the links. There is a Lille link. There is a Celtic link. And there will be other links from other clubs as well who are interested in strikers, wingers, whatever it may be. So Sebastian Anderson, current value once again, 5 million. So this is why a lot of clubs are going to be interested as well because the market is at an absolute snippet at the moment for quality. He's played nine games for Sweden, got three goals, played in their under-21 setup as well. And apparently he's a well-known Swedish striker, although we've not seen him on the international scene. And he, he, he is sort of in his prime right now, isn't he? 29 years of age, maybe not, maybe, maybe a bit over his prime, who knows? Um, but as I've said, my issue with this deal would be the fact that he's 29 years old. Um, listen, it's not old. I'm near on 27. If that's old, I've got no chance. But um, <laughs> yeah, I think in football in terms, what are we looking at nowadays? We're looking at 20 years old nowadays and uh, as a footballer. And you're thinking, yeah, they've played football for a couple of years, three or four years. You know, they're, they're in, they're, um, they're ready, they're swinging. They're in the prime sort of, even at 20 years old. A youngster nowadays in football is 16, 17. So a 29-year-old experience player do we need experience or do we need a bit of youth put it in the comment section below what you think because it's it's an interesting dynamic isn't it would a 29 year old be good in our squad but then you look at our squad in general Liam Cooper Stuart Dallas um Luke Ayling Patrick Bamford they're all 27 and post 27 so do we need to be looking at more youth or as opposed to that Premier League experience. That would be my rebuttal to that. Uh, the next link is Yasser Lerucci, uh, a Liverpool left back, an Algerian, and I've seen him play twice this year. I believe he was playing against Everton at home when Liverpool had the kids out against Everton and won that 1-0. Apologies, Everton fans. Um, but I did see him play against Tranmere in the FA Cup. He's a left-sided player, left back, it looks like a lot of fans as well, a lot of Leeds fans would be looking at a left back. Once again, put it in the comment section below. If you're a Leeds United fan, are you happy with Leif Davis, Alioski, Dallas? Are you happy with that? Or do you think we should reinforce the left hand side? Let me know in the comment section below. But a good player. And like Shiravella, like Nico Williams, like Van der Berg, the young kids at Liverpool, I believe, are going to be loaned out. You, know, you even look at Rian Brewster at Swansea. He could be of that Tammy Abraham link where Tammy Abraham went out for a loan at Bristol City the year afterwards. He went to Villa and absolutely stormed it. I could see the same thing with Brewster. Another year in the Championship, I think we're doing wonders. And this is the, the blueprint that Liverpool do. They do a lot of research into the clubs that they're, that they're either loaning or selling their products to. And then they either make they make a decision here or there, but it has to be right, even when they're selling a player, um, which I've, I've read this week, which is, is a cracking policy by Liverpool. But, um, you know, is that going to be a loan? I would personally go for that as a signing. I think he's a really good player. He's technically gifted once again. He's quick. He gets up and around the channels. He's in that clock mentality, that winning mentality, which I love. I'd love to pick off that crop. You know, we're in a winning mentality now. Why don't we add to that with more winners? And then we're going to be completely profitable in the future, playing on the football field or maybe in, in the transfer market a little bit further on down the line. Um uh, a bit of an interesting link, the Middlesbrough legend, Stu Arney. Now, I remember Stu Arney absolutely murdering us in the Belushi, in the Scott Wutton, in the Sol Bamba years. Um, Stu Arney was a good player for Borough. I think he got his move out to, I'm not really sure where he's at right now. Let me know in the comment section below. But um, 
Yeah, he's in Spain. I know that. And uh, he's, doing, he's doing a good job out there. The only thing is I've not done as much research on Stuani because I don't feel it's a credible link. I won't do as, many, as much research on, as I will with other players if it's not a credible link. Stuani's 33 years old. Yes, he's a forward and I'm not completely diminishing um, his abilities because, listen, in the Championship, he was brilliant. And Championship, what, the most entertaining, one of the most competitive leagues in the world. But I do not believe he can fit into this Marcelo Bielsa outfit. Why would we need a 33-year-old striker to go alongside a 27, 28-year-old Patrick Bamford? I think we need to be looking higher than that. And I think the club will look higher than that. Now, a centre-back choice that we've all been speaking about is Lucas Martinez Quarter. Or Kuata. Let me know in the comment section below once again. Guys, this is what I keep saying. Get it in the comment section below. I want this channel to be interactive, like a forum. If I'm pronouncing stuff wrong, if you don't agree with what I'm saying, if you agree with what I'm saying, whack it in the comments and I'll try to respond to you. The interaction has to be key on this channel. It's my number one priority. Um, but anyway, listen, he's supposed to be the replacement for Ben White. He's a centre-back lauded in Argentina, 20 years of age, and he's technically gifted. Once again, that's three players now I've spoken about who were technically gifted. You know, you look at their attributes, you look at if they would fit into this side. Yes, yes, yes. And that's why, yeah, these are all rumours, don't get me wrong, but they're all credible because you can see where they would fit into this Leeds United side. Um, the... <laughs> I guess my issue, issue with Croata is the fact that it's the Argentinian league. You know, 29 games a year, I believe. Um, and it is, well, a season, sorry. And I, I don't believe, and, and I apologise, Argentinian fans, but I'm sure you would agree. I know there's a few of you who watch the channel. Is it on the same level as the Premier League? You know, are you going to get um, someone like a Martinez coming into this side and being able to fit alongside that British back line and be able to be cohesive straight away. Because we need to hit the ground running. I think this year for Leeds United, we're going to surprise teams right at the start, as Sheffield United did, and maybe just sort of plateau towards the end. Not plateau, but plateau towards the end, hopefully, touch wood. So I think when you're looking at someone like a Martinez, he's coming into the squad, but is he going to be able to fit in straight away? You need a lot of time to adapt to the championship wow, you need a lot more time to adapt to the Premier League. You know, that's why you saw uh, players like, for, you know, when Norwich came into the Premier League, they made some signings, they made some signings from abroad. It didn't really work. The likes of Rupp, um, the likes of Duda. So, so, you know, they've got to be in the side from moment one and it's got to be a largely European um, uh, sort of British base for me because you, you're used to that standard. Is the Argentinian League anywhere near the standard of the Premier League? I'm not 100% sure. Another thing that puts me off a little bit with Martinez is the fact that he's, he's a little bit reckless. You know, I've seen a lot of highlight reels of him and I've spoken to a few people um, from Argentinian uh, uh, fanzines out there about him and they've told me he is slightly reckless, very gifted player, but slightly reckless. Now with VAR, with the Premier League as it is nowadays where you can't touch a player without getting a yellow card, I would be a little bit worried about that. You know, you've got a lot of offensive prowess in the Argentina, uh, sorry, in the Premier League. So are they going to be absolutely targeting our back line? They will be running at us because they'll probably see that as a weakness. So Leeds United need to build from the back. I see the Premier League and I see teams as absolutely successful when they build from the back. You know, you even look at that Gary Monk era where we had, we weren't great up front. Yeah, we had Chris Wood, but we didn't have much in behind Dakara Roof, you know, playing on the wings. It wasn't really that cohesive up front, but we had a solid back line. We have a solid back line this year. Ben White, Cooper, Dallas, Ailing, solid. You know, and then we have 22 clean sheets. You look at Sheffield United, you've got to build from the back or you will never be successful in any realm of football. And I think building from the back and being strong at the back is arguable. Well, no, it is. It's more important than being good going forward. Because obviously you need, to, you need to score goals. But I think being strong at the back and barely conceding is absolutely pivotal. Um, so yeah, uh, the, as well, guys, the Thiago Almada deal for me is off. Now, I don't know if it was on in the first place. He said he admired Bielsa. That doesn't mean he's going to play for Bielsa, does it? It just means he admires him. He grew up around Marcelo Bielsa, Noel's old boys, the Argentinian team winning Olympic gold. Does that mean he wants to come to Leeds United? Does that mean he wants to play for Leeds United this year? I would hark and say no. 
He has come out and said to Fernando Gargo, Fernando Gargo, obviously ex-defensive midfielder for the Argentinian national team, who I believe is his agent, and said that he wants to give another year to Vela Sarsfield. Fair enough. The kid is only 18 years old and he's only going to get better and better and better. So for me, that deal is off if it ever started. Obviously, we've touched on Ben White, so I'm just going to move swiftly over that. Now, the Adidas kit is the big talking point. When is it going to be revealed? Is anybody going to be revealed in it? Revealed in it? Who knows? But listen, it's going to come round. I'll put a concept kit kit on right now. And this is the best concept kit I've found um, because it matches the description. You know, the three stripes down the collar, the sort of yellow bit of finish. And the only thing that that's missing is Qatar Airways, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, um, listen, I'm really excited for it to be released. And I would, ha- I would hazard a guess it would be today. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this. A little bit of a quicker, much more comprehensive, like a lot of, a lot of rumors as well. I've tried to compile a lot more um, just because I want to inform you guys. And, and it helps me learn as well you know about who we're after what we're doing what we're what we're about in the transfer market even if it is not real so uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below as i said i want this to be interactive as a forum and as a channel i'll try and get us back to as many of you as i can i think i've got back to every single person so far who's commented on the channel so yeah that's what i'm trying to build as uh, as the focus point make sure you subscribe the subscriptions i keep saying this are unbelievable so thank you so so much um but yeah, guys, I'm exhausted just from talking through this. <laughs> but we have Chris Reeve from the Talk Norwich City um, uh, Talk Norwich City YouTube channel, which I know a lot of you watch, um, 18,000, 19,000 subscribers. And I'm going to do a little bit of a series coming up very, very soon. And this is going to be the start of it tonight. We're also releasing another series on Friday, which I'm going to start editing today. So stay tuned to the In Full Swing channel. And I'll see you in a bit. Cheers for watching, guys. Have an absolutely fantastic day. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you tomorrow.